From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. A group of war heroes hit the water today. While under the hot sun, the veterans were hoping for a bite or two as the day of fishing and fun was provided by a local club, all to say thank you for their service to the red, white, and blue. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jasmine Brooks. Now, before we get to our top story tonight, we have to talk about the weather. Some severe storms blew through the area just a little while ago. We know the power was knocked down in parts of the city of Hazleton, including some traffic lights. News 13 is also on the scene right now of a serious accident on Interstate 81 northbound near mile marker 145, where we know a tractor trailer crashed into a bridge. Over other vehicles are involved in that accident that happened at the height of the storm, which could have been the cause with ready, re heavy rain falling. We know that the driver of the rig suffered some serious head injuries. Rescue crews remain at the scene of the accident, and we hope to have more upcoming information live at 430. And be aware that many weather warnings for severe weather remain in effect through this evening. Moving on tonight, anglers headed to the water this morning, excited to reel in some fish at a lake stocked with over 100 fish, especially for them. And these anglers deserve it because they are all veterans, and fishing acts as a therapy for them. This relaxing, enjoyable activity is something the vets involved in the Healing Waters Project love to do. News 13 stopping by Paradise Hunting and Fishing Club in Carbon County this morning to meet up with the vets who were getting their fishing on. The members of the club opened it up just for these special guys who come from the Wilkes-Barre VA Hospital. The Healing Waters program is unique in that volunteers have an ongoing class with the vets, teaching them all about fishing and other valuable lessons. And for these anglers, it is much more than a day and a fishing trip. For many participants, particularly disabled veterans, the socialization and relationships made at the classes are just as important as the fishing outings themselves. We talked with organizer Joe Thomas along with two vets who were enjoying the day. Healing Waters Incorporated is a, an organization that tends to the veterans who have served our country. We offer a day of relaxation and fly fishing. Healing Waters uh, members are veterans and they, they're fly fishing uh, individuals themselves. Today the Paradise Hunting and Fishing Club has a great opportunity to provide a day of relaxation and opportunity for them to fish. These people here, you know, the Rod and Gun Club is the first time we've been up here and they are, you know, they are very gracious hosts. I mean, it's really nice to have people, you know, open their doors like this for us to come and have, you know, an outing. And it really does help. Well, my uh, son-in-law is uh, one of the members here, like the treasurer and that. And he called me up and invited me down with these uh, disabled veterans from, uh, you know, the VA. And I came down just to, you know, watch them. The veterans were also treated to a picnic style lunch while they were fishing today, all thanks to the fishing club. Now for more information on Healing Waters, head to their website, projecthealingwaters.org. It's the final resting place for many of Hazleton's founding families and a local war hero who have passed on. A city cemetery was the subject of some phone calls and emails News 13 received regarding the appearance of the final resting place for so many. These are some of the photos that were sent to us showing high grass almost covering the lower headstones at the Vine Street Cemetery in Hazleton City. The cemetery has been in the city for over 150 years. Some good news to report tonight. When News 13 stopped by the final resting place Friday afternoon, workers were in the process of cutting the high grass and doing some trimming. The Vine Street Cemetery is not owned or taken care of by the city of Hazleton and sits on about 12 acres of land with approximately 15,000 graves and 342 trees. Part-time seasonal employees and a non-paid administrator perform all of the maintenance work. Over 100 senior citizens from the greater Hazleton area are waiting for housing and numerous requests by others have been made with an ambulance with an abundance rather of seniors already on the list to eventually move into the hazel twins and vine manor apartment buildings should more dedicated senior spots 
be built. Mayor Joan Yanuzzi, along with members of the Hazleton Housing Authority, are now trying to figure out that answer. Right now, the Housing Authority owns two separate senior developments, Vine Manor and the Juniper Street High Rise Twins. But if the city were to add more senior citizen housing, where and when would they be built? While the whole idea is just in the talking stage, Mayor Yanuzzi gave News 13 a slight insight into the idea. We went in, we're reviewing it, we're uh, getting some uh, site locations, uh, we're talking to uh, a consultant, and we're getting that information together, and we're not at the point yet to do anything or release anything, but uh, uh, there is a big need here for uh, senior housing. Although plans are only in the preliminary phase, Mayor Joe Yanuzzi says he would like to see a senior apartment building in the downtown area. Grand Snita would not be available until at least the fall time. Yanuzzi says 2014 is a good estimate of when these buildings may become a reality. More than 80 million people in the United States have no health insurance or need help to buy their prescription medicine not covered by their health plan. Saving a buck or two on prescription medicine can be a tremendous help considering the high cost. Good news for residents in Schuylkill County who have the chance to save 75%. It's pretty amazing. By sending one simple text, you can save on the cost of your prescriptions up to 75%. Here's how it works. Text the word FAMILY to 700-700 and save. You will then receive a free FamilyWise prescription discount card sent to your phone. Just show the text to your pharmacist. This incredible help is all thanks to the Schuylkill United Way and FamilyWise who have worked together to save people living and working in the community of Schuylkill County over 820 $820,000 on the cost of their medicine. Firefighters were called out this morning to a business along Route 93 in Hazel Township. We found fire trucks from Hazel Township Fire and Rescue Company parked outside Radio Shack. Luckily, there was no fire inside. It was a problem with the power to the business. The issue affected Monroe Muffler next door to Radio Shack as well. PPL crews were called to the scene to take care of this issue. State police are giving the owner of a Jeep that was found several months ago in Banks Township one more chance to claim the vehicle. Troopers tell News 13 a 1996 Jeep was found back in March on private property in a wooded area near Tresco. The vehicle was towed and when troopers went to the vehicle's last registered owner, she claimed to have sold it. Hazleton State Police are requesting the current owner of the Jeep respond immediately or the vehicle will be destroyed. To prove ownership, the person should have the title of that Jeep. All right, coming up on News 13, summer's in full swing, and with that comes a lot of fun activities outdoors. We'll tell you all about one coming up this weekend. Plus, if you're into motorcycles, you may want to stay tuned. And later, will the jury find Jerry Sandusky guilty or not guilty? We'll head to the streets of downtown Hazleton to find out what people think. Stay with us. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. and Ron Marchetti. Well, it's one of the rights of summers here in the greater Hazleton area and all throughout Pennsylvania. Actually, it's the District Little League Tournament. Around here, it's the District 18 Tournament. And uh, we had some uh, heavy showers about an hour ago, but it looks like uh, these games are going to be okay. Hopefully, the weather holds out for another hour or so and we'll get them in. Here's what we're looking at. So if you're interested, go out and check one of these games out. You got uh, Tamaqua, one of the perennial powers. They're in Whitehaven tonight. Meanwhile, Valley West visits Talminzing, and Freeland and Hazleton will do battle up at Coriel Stadium, 9th and 1 G Street in Hazleton. The rest of the bracket, Weatherly is down at Valley East, Franklin Township over at Jim Thorpe, and this should be a good one. Tri-County and Hazel Township, that one down at the Township Field. Uh, I think that might be the game of the night, at least on paper. We'll wait and see. Now tomorrow, the 9- and 10-year-old tournament, Northern Division gets underway at Whispering Willows Park. There's your matchup. Post Valley West and Hazel Township, Freeland and Valley East, Whitehaven, Hazelton, and West Hazelton and Tri-County will do battle. All of that action will start at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning down at Whispering Willows, as we said. So uh, 
Looking forward to it. The District 18 Little League Tournament. Now, uh, down south, there's the last part of it. Anthracite's playing Tamaqua White. Uh, you got Weatherly and Franklin Township, and you have Jim Thorpe Red and Tamaqua Blue. So, uh, all gets underway. Exciting time of year, to say the least. Now, once they play Little League, they go on and uh, move to Babe Ruth and Legion and high school and all that. Yesterday, we had ourselves a dandy American Legion game right here in Hazleton. Hazleton nursed a 1-0 lead into the last inning, but with uh, two outs, Swoyersville, which is basically Wyoming Valley West High School's team, they rallied and tied the game. And that set up the dramatics in extra innings. Carl Cara led off with a booming triple up the gap in right center field, and uh, he came home on a base hit to win the ball game, and uh, they knocked off Swoyersville second time this year. They've beaten Swoyersville both times by one run, both of them exciting games. They'll be uh, in action today. Stripes and Strikes, the Hazleton team, they'll uh, be playing up in Mountaintop, again, weather permitting. Now, minor league baseball, Russ Kanzler took an Ofer and his Columbus team got nipped 5-4 by Charlotte. Kyle Landis, he uh, pitched two innings, gave up one earned run. His Akron team got doubled up by Binghamton. Louisville knocked around the scranton Wilkesbury Yankees. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, they beat the Toledo Mudheads. There's your minor league schedule today with Lehigh Valley going to Columbus to take on Kanzler and company. Akron is at Altoona, scranton Wilkesbury is out in Indianapolis. And interleague baseball tonight, Joe Madden getting as close to home as he gets. He'll be at Citizens Bank Ballpark for the weekend. The Rays, the Phillies, a rematch of the World Series from 2008. Tigers are in Pittsburgh and in Gotham. It's Subway Series Part 2. Maybe the Mets could even win one this time around. That one at City Field. And tonight we're brought to you by our friends at Stripes and Strikes. Make the right call and get down to Stripes and Strikes because baseball season is here. Now we're talking baseball pants, jerseys, hats, gloves, bats, batting gloves, bags, catcher's equipment. We've got league discounts available. All the top name brands, Wilson, Rawlings, DeMarini, and Diamond. Check it out at Stripes and Strikes, your headquarters for softball and baseball. Look for the big green awning down across from Janetti's Best Western on Route 309 in Hazleton. If he was alive today, Pistol Pete Maravich would have turned 65. Hi, everybody. This is Short Shots. Let's review this past week. Last Friday night between 10 and 11 p.m., Nick Wallawenda walked over Niagara Falls on a tightrope. Mother of God. Webb Simpson won the U.S. Open in San Francisco. Dale Earnhardt Jr. won a race after four years and 143 races in Brooklyn, Michigan. After finishing his career with... 13,684 yards and 145 touchdowns. The fifth leading rusher in NFL history, LaDainian Tomlinson, has retired from the NFL as a San Diego Charger. Roger Clement was found not guilty on all six counts of perjury. The jury ruled that the record seven-time Cy Young Award winner did not lie to Congress about steroid use, which means that they thought the leading witness, Roger McNamee, is a liar. Former Hazel Area Outstanding Athlete and Sky Roman Award winner Russ Kanzler had an outstanding week with the bat for the Columbus Clippers in the International League. Kanzler was that league's MVP last season when he played for the Durham Bulls. Phillies rookie, infielder Freddie Galvis was suspended for 50 games by Major League Baseball for testing positive for a banned substance. Not a big deal since he's on a DL anyway with a back injury. The Miami Heat clinched the NBA championship last night, which I claimed all season they would, defeating Oklahoma City four straight after losing game one in Oklahoma City. The UConn men's basketball team has been banned from the NCAA tournament. The three-time national champions are being penalized because of poor academics progress rate scores. The Huskies are the first Division I team to face a postseason ban based solely on sub-pre-academics. UConn had been a regular in the NCAA tournament since 1990, winning 48 postseason games and national titles in 1999, 2004, and 2011, but not this year. An outstanding game performance took place this week in Junior Babe Ruth. Michael Reinhardt of Tyrone's Market struck out 17 batters 
And speaking of stars, a former basketball and baseball star from St. Gabriel's, Jim Barrett from 1964 and 1965 passed away in Bath, PA at the age of 65. Our condolences to Jim's family and his friends. Till next time, be a good sport and stay loose. Up now on your screen, those winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck to you if you played on this Friday. Daily number 875, Big 4, 8347, Quinto 34478, and your treasure hunt 7914 Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One announcement for this evening, the Look Good, Feel Better program teaches women with cancer how to overcome the side effects of treatment. The next session will be held Monday, July 9th from 1 to 3 p.m. in the Laurel Mall. For more information about this program, please call the American Cancer Society today, 1-800-227-2345. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Marie D. Trotsky, formerly of Edwardsville. Funeral is Tuesday at 9 a.m. from the Kapiki Funeral Home. Friends may call Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Lucille M. Allegretto of Hazleton. Mass will be held Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. in the Queen of Heaven Parish at Our Lady of Grace Church. There will be no public viewing. The Joseph Aberan Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Elaine M. Wargo of Drifton. Arrangements are incomplete and will be announced by the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Lawrence A. Bott of Weston. Funeral is Monday at 11 a.m. in the Sacred Heart Church. Friends may call at the church Monday from 10 to 11 a.m. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. And Loretta Carr Prokopovich, formerly of Freeland. Memorial service is Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Okies Roanoke Chapel. Friends may call beginning at 1 p.m. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for second best when dining out. Discover Mia's new, all low price menu. And don't forget, there's always plenty of free gated parking behind the Markle Building. It's time for the Movie Minute on News 13, your weekly look at what's playing at Regal Cinema 10 just outside the Laurel Mall. Lots of great flicks to check out this weekend. New to the big screen is Brave. A Scottish princess is determined to make her own path in life. Princess Marita defies a custom that brings chaos to her kingdom. Granted just one wish, Marita must rely on her bravery and her archery skills to undo a beastly curse. Also hitting the theater this weekend is Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. In the exploration of the secret life of our greatest president, the untold story that shaped our nation is unraveled. As the 16th president of the United States discovers vampires are planning to take over our country and makes it his mission to eliminate them. For all the showtimes at Regal Cinema 10, call 450-7454. Or to speak to a movie attendant, call 450-7340. And to find the entire Regal Cinema schedule and movie showing times, visit our website at ssptv.com. Power, a group with a focus on getting greater Hazleton businesses, residents, and people of all ages and backgrounds together to make Hazleton beautiful, in cooperation with the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce, the downtown business community is partnering up to help clean the heart of the community, and they want you to join them. The cleanup will take place Saturday, June 23rd, that is tomorrow. The group plans to meet on Broad Street in front of the Hazleton Chamber of Commerce building at 8 a.m., ready to take on the streets of downtown Hazleton. Stay long or just for a bit, bring a friend or two. Whatever you choose, you'll be helping to make a difference. The chamber will provide supplies and after the cleanup, everyone who is participating is welcome to meet at Vesuvio's on Wyoming Street for an after party. So come out, get busy, get dirty and clean up the downtown streets of Hazleton. And after you clean up the streets and show your power, you should head to the Hazleton Area Fire Company and lend a helping hand by taking a chance at winning a new set of wheels. We told you on Thursday a custom-made motorcycle is being raffled off and all the proceeds will go to the Valley Regional Fire and Rescue Company and its fire outreach program. Thanks to the talented guys at Iron Hog in Hazleton, this bike will help the fire company raise money for its fire victims outreach program, which was started last year to assist fire victims, especially children who lose toys in fires. 
The bike raffle is part of an even bigger event called Rally in the Valley, happening this weekend with a motorcycle run Saturday and a car show Sunday. The poker bike run on Saturday will be 83 miles with registration from 10 to noon. The car show Sunday starts at 10 with registration and the show will be open from noon to 4. All entries will be judged. Both days will feature live entertainment, food, refreshments, tricky trays and games. You can call the firehouse for more information or get in touch with any firefighter. Well, the weather is supposed to be perfect all weekend, so power and the chamber will have clear skies to clean up the streets, and the firefighters will have clear skies to hit the road running and celebrate Rally in the Valley. Helping to bring you the forecast over the next 24 hours is Jolly Mark Castillo from the West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. There is a sun in the sky and a rainbow, a sun with a smiley face, actually. Jolly Mar is also playing outside, enjoying the sunshine herself. You should definitely do some playing outside this Saturday. Let's take a look at that forecast tonight. We're going to see mostly cloudy skies. Showers are going to be likely with a high of 58 degrees tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, a low of 58 degrees tomorrow. Sunny skies, high 77 degrees. Tonight's weather brought to you by Just Windows and so much more. They're the pros and windows indoors since 1985. Give them a call 636-1133. More news headed your way with Kristen Bozinski next. Stay with us. A local eatery closed down with little notice to customers and work is already underway to transform the building into new businesses. We head to Butler Township, Luzerne County right now. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Now, before we get to our top story tonight, we have to talk about the weather, of course. Some severe storms blew through the area just a little while ago. We know power was knocked out in parts of the city of Hazleton, including some traffic lights. News 13 also on the scene of this serious accident on Interstate 81 northbound near mall marker 145, where we know a tractor trailer crashed into a bridge and other vehicles were involved. The accident happened at the height of the storm, which could have been the cause with heavy rain falling. We know that the driver of the rig suffered some serious head injuries and the accident left fluids leaking onto the highway along with a traffic backup. And you better be aware that many weather warnings for severe weather remain in effect from the National Weather Service throughout this evening. Back to our top story, imagine going to your favorite restaurant to grab a bite to eat only to find that it is no longer open for business. That's what happened to one local woman when she arrived at Bobby's of New York in Drums. News 13 stopping by what once was Bobby's of New York Friday afternoon. The restaurant is now gone. As a matter of fact, all the equipment is gone too. We did find construction and cleaning being done in preparation for the businesses to move in. We're told the building is being transformed into an office building and will house a few businesses, including an insurance company. No official word tonight on why Bobby's of New York shut down. The restaurant just celebrated its official grand opening this past December. John and Ann Hoffman own the eatery, which offered a separate deli and a separate pub. In other news tonight, the driver of a car that rolled off the interstate walked away from the wreck. It happened near the exit ramp off of Interstate 81 northbound at Route 924. The vehicle on its side was the only one involved in the accident, and we're told the man driving that car escaped injury. News 13 was there as tow truck drivers were working to flip the car back onto its wheels and tow the crashed vehicle away. Traffic was stopped for a short time. No word on why the driver lost control of his car on Interstate 81 in Hazel Township Friday afternoon. Today marked day two of deliberations for jurors in Jerry Sandusky's child sex abuse trial. It was a long session Thursday as jurors talked for more than eight hours before adjourning. And today, jurors listened again to testimony from a key prosecution witness against the former Penn State assistant football coach. The jury again listened to taped testimony from another Penn State assistant coach, Mike McQuery, who spoke about a boy allegedly assaulted inside a football facility shower by Sandusky. McQuery told jurors he did not see penetration, but did see a boy pressed up against a wall with Sandusky behind him. Jurors also heard from McQuery's doctor, who said 
McQuery told him a different version of that story. Today's testimony comes a day after attorneys for Sandusky's 33-year-old adopted son said he'd been abused by the former coach and had been prepared to testify against him if called to the stand. Now, again, they are in deliberations. I apologize. That was uh, testimony from a few days ago from Coach McQuery. But again, if we get a verdict before the end of tonight's newscast, we will, of course, bring it to you immediately. News 13 hit the streets of downtown Hazleton this afternoon to find out which direction people think the jury will go, guilty or not guilty. 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 I think they were going to find Jerry Sandusky very guilty. Well, I hope they find him guilty. What he did was wrong. I mean, he don't do these things. If he gets away with it, I think he's going to commit suicide. I think they're going to find him guilty. I mean, there's too many witnesses and victims and everything else. So I believe guilty. Well, you have over 42 counts of horsing around, so <laughs> I think they're going to get him. From everything that I've been hearing on the TV and out on the newspaper and all that, I would say that he was 100% guilty. Now you think he's guilty. Do you think the jury will find him guilty? Well, I hope the jury will find him guilty. If I was there, I'll find him guilty for sure. Guilty. I'd go with guilty, but I'm not, I would say guilty, but I'm not sure what the jury is gonna say. I mean, just the evidence is so overwhelming against him. It's ridiculous. Those crimes, number one, are like probably the most inhumane act anybody could ever do or commit. So seeing all the evidence against it, over 42 cases, lots of people looking at it, I mean, I think it's going to come out guilty. Because the evidence and um, everything that's been said in the trial just points to him being guilty. What do you think of all of this? I think that uh, it should have been taken care of a long time ago when that guy caught him in the shower with the kid. But at least it's all coming out now. We don't know exactly what is going on until we are in that courtroom. Because you see trials like OJ and Casey Anthony that we think that they are 100% guilty, but then the jury goes the other way. So there's a reason why they're going another way. Now, Sandusky has repeatedly denied all allegations. He has 48 charges against him and could spend the rest of his life behind bars. A man convicted of severely stabbing another man in the city of Hazleton back in 2010 was sentenced Thursday and will be spending the next six to 12 months in prison for the crime. Rowdy Frias Sanchez of 578 North Church Street was found guilty by a jury back in January of stabbing Benjamin Cervantes at least eight times during a fight in the area of East Mine and Mill Streets in the fall of 2010. Cervantes said Frias Sanchez and another man jumped him and that Frias Sanchez stabbed him and punched him. Cervantes ended up in a trauma center. Police initially said a possible motive to the crime was retaliation. Frias Sanchez was immediately taken into custody after Thursday's sentencing by sheriffs. Stay with us tonight on News 13. We have your weekend forecast. Will the nice hot temps be staying? Your answer coming up. Also ahead, they are flying out the door fast. The Pennsylvania Lottery's million dollar raffle. Find out why they're going so fast and where and if you can get your hands on a ticket coming up. Tickets for the Pennsylvania Lottery's July 7th Millionaire Raffle Drawing are a hot commodity these days, and it's no mystery why. The game offers 6,000 cash prizes totaling more than $5 million. That's fast cash, and less than 250,000 tickets are still available. The fast-selling tickets went on sale the first week of May and will continue until 5 p.m., on July 7th or until all 500,000 tickets are sold. If you haven't gotten a ticket yet, do so very soon because tickets for the 13 previous millionaire raffles sold out before each drawing. Winning millionaire raffle ticket numbers will be randomly selected at 6.59 p.m. on July 7th. The lottery's live drawing show will televise the selection of four $1 million top prize raffle ticket numbers and four $100,000 second prize raffle ticket numbers. Good luck to all of you if you play.
Anglers headed to the water this morning excited to reel in some fish at a lake stocked with over 100 of the little fishies, especially for them. And these anglers deserve it because they are all veterans and fishing acts as a therapy for them. This relaxing, enjoyable activity is something the vets involved in the Healing Waters Project love to do. News 13 stopping by Paradise Hunting and Fishing Club in Carbon County this morning to meet up with the vets who were getting their fishing on. The members of the club opened it up just for these special guys who come from the Wilkes-Barre VA Hospital. The Healing Waters Project is unique in that the volunteers have ongoing classes with the vets, teaching them all about fishing and other valuable lessons. And for these anglers, it is much more than a one-day fishing trip. For many participants, particularly disabled veterans, the socialization and relationships made at the classes are just as important as the fishing outings. We talked with organizer Joe Thomas along with two vets who were enjoying the day. The Healing Waters Incorporated is a, an organization that tends to the veterans who have served our country. We offer a day of relaxation and fly fishing. Healing Waters uh, members are veterans and they, they're fly fishing uh, individuals themselves. Today the Paradise Hunting and Fishing Club has a great opportunity to provide a day of relaxation and opportunity for them to fish. These people here, you know, the Rod and Gun Club is the first time we've been up here, and they are, you know, they are very gracious hosts. I mean, it's really nice to have people, you know, open their doors like this for us to come and have, you know, an outing, and it really does help. Well, my uh, son-in-law is uh, one of the members here, like the treasurer and that, and he called me up and invited me down with these uh, disabled veterans from, uh, you know, the VA, mm -hmm. and I came down just to, you know, watch them. The veterans were also treated to a picnic-style lunch while they were fishing today, all thanks to the fishing club. For more information on Healing Waters, make sure you head to the website. Check it out, projecthealingwaters.org. It is the final resting place for many of Hazleton's founding families and local war heroes who have passed on. A city cemetery was the subject of some phone calls and emails recently to News 13 regarding the appearance of the final resting place for so many. These are some of the photos that were sent to us showing high grass almost covering the lower headstones at the Vine Street Cemetery in Hazleton City. Now the cemetery has been in the city for over 150 years. Some good news to report tonight folks. When News 13 stopped by the final resting place Friday afternoon, workers were in the process of cutting the high grass and doing some trimming. The Vine Street Cemetery is not owned or taken care of by the city of Hazleton and sits on about 12 acres of land with approximately 15,000 graves and 342 trees. Part-time seasonal employees and a non-paid administrator perform all of the maintenance work here. The weather is supposed to be perfect for this weekend, so if you're heading out with power in the chamber to clean the streets, clear skies. And the firefighters down at Valley Regional holding that bike run, they'll have clear skies for Rally in the Valley. Helping to bring you the forecast over the next 24 hours is Jolly Mar Castillo from the West Hazleton Elementary Middle School. There is a sun in the sky and a rainbow. Jolly Mar is also playing outside, enjoying that sunshine with a happy face. You should definitely do some playing outside this Saturday and Sunday. Let's check out your four-day outlook. First for tonight, where we do see a chance of more thunderstorms coming our way, more heavy downpours, low down to 58 degrees. The good news is, if you don't like the heat, the thunderstorms that are blowing through our area and already have are cooling it off a bit. Saturday, we'll see a high up to 77, low down to 55, but the sun will be shining. Same with Sunday, 78 will be our high with a low down to 61. Then on Monday, we do see a chance of a thunderstorm high up to 71 degrees with a low down to 52. And for your Tuesday, look for a chance of showers, but that sun will peek through the clouds and we're only gonna get up to 66 degrees. So we're going from 95 and higher to 66 on Tuesday. Lazy Dog Salon bringing you the forecast tonight. 425B North Broad Street, West Hazleton. Make sure you call and make an appointment at 459-0310. Make an appointment for your furry friend. Also, Valley High Drive-In, great place to stop over this weekend. Route 93 in West Hazleton. Ice cream, milkshakes, great food, and so much more. That's Valley High, Route 93. 
Stay with us on News 13. We want you to celebrate. Celebrate America's birthday with us by sending in your patriotic pictures. We'll tell you how next. But first, Freddie B's in with sports. He's talking a little baseball. Joe Madden's Rays are in the city of brotherly love. Will they give the Phillies a little run for their money? More on the games coming up in just a bit. As the Summer Olympics creep closer this year from London, England, what better way to prepare for the colossal event than an Olympic Day activity right here at home? And the entire community is invited, especially kids who have an interest in BMX racing. Hazleton City View BMX Park will be joining tracks around the nation, participating in an Olympic Day. The epic event is happening this Sunday, June 24th, with registration beginning at noon until 1.45. The race will begin promptly at 2. Hazleton City View BMX track is located right off of Poplar Street in Hazleton. Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi is also stopping by the track to present the BMXers with a proclamation. It is sure to be a very exciting day. For more information, you can visit www.usabmx.com or hazeltoncityview.com. In honor of the 4th of July holiday, News 13 wants to show off our viewers' love for America. We need you to send us pictures of your children, pets, yourself, or maybe your home decor that shows your patriotism. Or even maybe your own American hero, a soldier in your family serving currently or a veteran. All of the pictures will be featured on July 4th right here on News 13 between 4 and 5 o'clock. With your snapshot, please include a brief description to be used along with it on air. You can email pictures to me here at the station. The address is Kristen at SSPTV.com or drop them to in the mail to 109 West Broad Street in Hazleton with a self-addressed stamped envelope if you'd like your picture returned or just bring them to us in person anytime between 9 and 5. Help us say happy birthday to America and show off the great patriotism here in Greater Hazleton. We need all your pictures by Monday, July 2nd. That'll do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day and your week. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout tonight or simply go to News 13's website whenever you'd like, ssptv.com. It's all just a click away right there. On behalf of your News 13 team, be safe. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Good night.